I'm writing this post anonymously because if anyone found out that I wrote this, my academic reputation would be ruined forever. As bizarre and frankly disturbing as what I'm about to tell you is, I assure you it's all true. I'm an academic historian and researcher of the Byzantine Empire. I've published dozens of influential papers in academic journals, and I have a permanent teaching position at a major state university in the United States. My main area of research is on the influence of classical mythology on the Byzantine hagiography in the 6th through 9th centuries CE. I'm used to reading all sorts of bizarre stories about Eastern Orthodox saints, such as Saint Christophorus, who, according to some stories, had the head of a dog. Saint Simeon, the holy fool, who was said to have pretended to be stupid and insane to avoid being praised for his holiness. And the Silites, who lived on top of columns for years on end without ever coming down. Nearly two decades ago, however, I discovered something really, truly weird. Something no other Byzantinus has ever seen. As much as I have studied it, I still can't explain it rationally. Back in late September 2001, I was visiting a very old Greek Orthodox monastery at Mount Athos in northern Greece near Thessaloniki that had been founded in around the 7th century CE. The old monk who was the head of the monastery showed me to the monastery library, which was a dusty, disorganized room with an assortment of all kinds of texts and manuscripts of all different ages stacked in rows of old wood shelves. I knew as soon as I saw it that it was a treasure trove of information. I was hoping I might find new texts that scholars did not already know about. After sorting through stack after stack of medieval manuscripts, I came across a manuscript that caught my attention. It wasn't like any of the others. For one thing, it was clearly one of the oldest manuscripts in the collection. Many of the manuscripts in the collection dated to the 14th century or later, but this one was definitely from the early 9th century. That wasn't all that was unique about it. It was also the thickest book in the collection by far. I opened it up and found a strange text written in Byzantine Greek. The very first line on the very first page read as follows, in my own translation. Herein lie the prophecies of Didymus of Thessaloniki, son of Amphilochius. All things that are yet to come until the day of judgment are recorded in this tome. I was instantly intrigued by this find. I continued reading. The book began with a detailed description of major events that happened in the Byzantine Empire over the course of the 9th century CE. Although the description was written as a prophecy, I knew the text must have been written after the fact. Such phaticinia ex eventu are extremely common in ancient and medieval prophetic texts. Whenever someone in ancient or medieval times wanted to write something to make it seem like it was truly prophetic, they would write about something that had already happened, but present the description as though it were a prediction. As I continued reading, though, I began to feel more and more puzzled. The book just kept describing more and more events. It moved from the 9th century to the 10th century, and from there to the 11th and then the 12th, then the 13th. Strangely, though, the book did not seem like a 13th century work. It very much seemed like it had been written in the early 9th century. I was starting to suspect that the book I was holding was a deliberate modern forgery. In other words, not Byzantine at all but rather a nefarious hoax. I was perplexed, however, because everything about the manuscript aside from its contents clearly indicated it had been written in the early 9th century. The parchment was definitely 9th century parchment. The text was written in perfect 9th century Byzantine Greek without any of the anomalies one would expect from a modern forgery. The handwriting was characteristic of the 9th century Byzantine style. If this document was a forgery, it could have only been forged by someone extremely knowledgeable. Indeed, only a world-renowned expert could have possibly created such a forgery. As I continued reading, I came to a description of the rise of Mehmet II, the fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Turks in 1453, and the death of Constantinus VII Paleologos, the last emperor of the Byzantine Empire. The document then moved on from describing events in Byzantine history to events in world history at large. It described the rise of the Aztec and Incan empires, the European discovery of the Americas, the Protestant Reformation, the Ming Dynasty in China, the founding of the Mughal Empire in India, and other events. It even covered in extensive detail events that contemporary historians have no knowledge of. For instance, 
It described events taking place in parts of North America, Africa, and Australia that we have no record of. As I continued reading, the text continued describing events in world history, growing closer and closer to the present day. It described all the major events of the 18th and 19th centuries, including the Seven Years' War, the American Revolution, the French Revolution, the rise of Napoleon, the colonization of Australia, the Greek War for Independence, British Crown Rule in India, the Opium Wars, the American Civil War, the 19th century revolutions in Central and South America, the partition of Africa, and so on. Then came a chilling and detailed account of the wars and devastation of the early 20th century. World War I, the overthrow of Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, the overthrow of the Qing Dynasty, the 1918 Spanish influenza pandemic, the rise of the Nazis in Germany, World War II, the Holocaust, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Greek Civil War, the Cold War. This author knew everything. He gave the exact names, dates, and locations of all the events he described. The dates were given on the Byzantine Anamundi calendar, rather than the Western calendar, but they were all correct. Finally, after describing the events of the latter half of the 20th century, including the founding of the United Nations, the founding of the European Union, the collapse of the Soviet Union, and the origins of the internet, the text came to the 21st century. I was expecting it to end there, but it just kept going. It described the attacks on September 11, 2001 in great detail. Even though the attacks had only happened a matter of a few weeks before, and most of the details were, at the time, not publicly known, then I read something that made my blood turn cold and every hair on my body stand on end. The document read, once again in my own translation, This book of prophecies will be discovered in the library of a monastery at Mount Athos in the first month of the year 7510, since the creation of the cosmos according to the Romans, the year in which they shall know as 2001. It will be discovered by a scholar named, my full name, who will be greatly astonished at the accuracy of these predictions. He will steal this book and take it back to the land they will call America, where it shall reside for a generation. I was shocked when I read this. I was certain that the manuscript had to be some kind of joke. I looked around to see if anyone was going to jump out and laugh at me, but no one was there. It was just me, sitting alone in the monastery library. The first month of the Byzantine calendar is September. That means the author of that manuscript somehow knew not only the exact year I would come to find the book, but the exact month as well. The manuscript was right about me stealing it too, although that may have been a self-fulfilling prophecy to some extent. I stole the manuscript from the monastery and smuggled it across the Atlantic back to the United States. I kept the manuscript a complete secret and didn't tell any of my colleagues about it. The only reason I'm telling you about the manuscript now is because, for the past 18 years, I have been keeping careful track of all the prophecies in the manuscript. Every single prophecy that was supposed to come true in the past 18 years has. The manuscript predicted the war on terror, the Great Recession, the rise of right-wing nationalist populism, the election of Donald Trump as President of the United States, Brexit, and even the recent fires in the Amazon rainforest. If it was a major event, the manuscript predicted it. I now know that the prophecies in the book are somehow completely genuine. None of the manuscript's past predictions scare me, though. What truly scares me is what the manuscript says is going to happen next. I desperately hope that what the manuscript says is going to happen doesn't happen, but everything it has ever predicted has come true. So I see no reason why what it says is coming won't come. It seems that the imminent tribulations are inevitable. We like to think that the world is getting better that the horrors of the present are merely transitory, but I fear that what is yet to come is far, far worse than anything we have seen already. Soon, very soon, suffering and death will rain down upon the world. There will be plagues, droughts, and food shortages. Many people, especially poor people, people living in poorer countries will die. There will be terrible wars that will destroy countless lives, resources will run low. It will be a time unlike any other. Now, you may be thinking, yeah, yeah, I've heard a million different predictions about how the end of the world is going to happen soon, and how it's going to be so awful, and then nothing ever happens. The problem is, the manuscript doesn't say that the end of the world is coming soon. In fact, it says just the opposite. The end of the world won't come for a very long time, but it would be a mercy compared to all the hardships we have left to endure.
Hello everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Unfortunately, I've been sick the last few days. I was hoping I'd feel better by now, but I don't, so... Uh, I hope that I didn't sound too stuffed up for this video. I wanted to still make something for you guys today, even if it was just a short video. Hopefully I feel better by tomorrow, because tomorrow I'm doing a longer one. I wanted to let you guys know that the channel now has access to the membership feature, which is uh, kind of like Patreon, um, where you guys can subscribe, like join the channel membership, and there are different tiers, and then depending on which tier you are, you get different rewards and features and things you can use on the channel. I was going to make a whole video about it, but I figured rather than doing that, I would just uh, mention it at the end of this video to give you guys some information on it. I also wanted to thank uh, Robin Hood. She's my fir or the first channel member, so thank you. Um, I'm still working on check like making sure the features are good, making sure that everyone thinks what you get in each tier is worth it. If any of you are interested in checking out the channel memberships, you should be able to just click the join button that's uh, on this page here next to the subscribe button, or you can go to my main uh, page and click on the memberships tab there. But I'm looking for feedback from you guys on what you think and if you think I should change any of the tiers or add certain features. I would just love to know what you guys think of it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to go lay down. I hope you guys have a good night.